This is a three-part video. In the first part, I will be going over the framing for a hip roof that is going to have a vaulted ceiling or a cathedral ceiling on the inside. And in the second video, I'm going to talk about larger hip beams and how you might be able to make them work a little bit better on your project. And in the third video, I'm going to go over the hip roof framing component calculation. So stay tuned and let's go ahead and get started with the hips and that's going to be one on each side the jack or the fill rafters and then the common rafters the ridge. This is going to be a beam that's going to sit on top of a post and this post will sit on top of another beam. The weight from that beam will transfer down to larger footings and since I am not a structural engineer I will not be able to provide you with any footing size or lumber sizes for your project. And you can get a pretty good view of how it's all going to transfer down to the ground here. And keep in mind that this is one method. I'm sure there are other methods that you can use. And if I can think of which ones those are going to be, I will definitely make another video. So you can get a pretty good idea how the weight is going to be distributed and how the rafters will help to keep the walls straight and prevent them from moving all the way around the building. And of course, the beam here can be viewed as a rafter tie. And then our common rafters, these two rafters will be the same. This one here will be a little different. And the weight from the fill rafters or the jack rafters will transfer to the lower framing plates and to the larger hip support beams. Next up, let's go ahead and fill in the jack rafters and then our common rafters and then the other fill rafters. And we do have shaped blocks here at the bottom, meaning that the top of the block is going to be shaped the same angle as the roof rafters. This will provide us with some better nailing for the roof sheathing that will transfer down to the perimeter of the wall framing. And that usually makes your engineer happy. Let's go ahead and take a look at it from the inside where you will be able to drywall the underside of the fill rafters, where you will be able to drywall or plaster around the hips, the post, the beam, and the rafters. And if you don't want the post, you don't want the beam, and you don't want the larger hip rafter beams, then all you need to do is use a gable roof. Do not use a hip roof. And if you wanted to have a hip roof view from the bottom, but you didn't want the beams, then you can always build a gable roof all the way to the wall and then frame a separate ceiling underneath the gable roof. In this video, we're going to talk about the hip seat cut the area down here, especially when you have a larger sized hip like we have here. We have a 2x10 for our hip and 2x6 for our roof rafters. And for some of you who have watched the videos for a while, it's not uncommon to find a hip that needs to be reshaped to where we have a long section like this that will not be bearing on the framing plates. And someone was asking, if there was anything else you could do about that. And in reality, if you're going to have ceiling joists, then it will be difficult to raise the height of the wall. Because if you raise the height of the wall, you're going to need to attach a ledger to the wall with hangers or use larger roof rafters. For example, if I was going to use 2x10 roof rafters and a 2x10 hip, this section of the hip wouldn't be this long. So I'm not about to suggest that there aren't any options if you want to reduce the length of the area here that could create structural problems. You're going to end up with a structural problem if it was to split in this section here or the area that is not structurally supported by a wall or a beam you could end up with some major structural damage. So when you're dealing with conventional lumber like this, you are going to have a few options. But that's not going to be the case if you have a large glue lamp beam or something that is going to 
require full bearing and not a huge notch cut out of it that will be unsupported. And the first thing I would like to suggest to you is that you contact the structural engineer and have them provide you with a fix. It's not your job to figure out how to cut this stuff and you do not want to be responsible for making a mistake. So here's what happened on this job. I asked the owner, they were building a spec home here. I asked the owner before they poured the concrete and asked a few more times before we finally got down to actually stopping the job and the owner didn't want to do that. So he went ahead and approved the examples that I will provide you with in this video. And that will be lowering the hip and not hack away at the bottom. And if you could only imagine what type of a mistake this would have been if I would have had to have done this in the same way I did it in the first section of the video. After this was done, everybody was happy or at least nobody mentioned it ever again. And for all of you engineers and architects out there who deliberately delay decisions like this because you don't want to make them, then all I can say is in this case, it worked again. Nice one. And trust me, there are plenty of reasons why the engineer and the architect aren't going to make these decisions. And one of them is the fact that they don't know how to fix them. So here you go right here. If this works for you, here's another way you can use to solve this problem if it's actually something that would actually calc out and work. So here we have a flat ceiling with a section of the hip extending into the corner here and the owner simply drywalled around it and that was the end of that. And even though I made fun of the engineers and architects in this video, make sure that you check with the job site engineer, architect, local building authorities, or anyone else who would be involved in making a decision like this to verify whether or not you can use this on your construction project. In this video, I will provide you with the framing square ratios that you might need to build a hip roof. The video will not provide you with any calculations for the roof framing components, but will provide you with methods you can use to set up a framing square to lay out those components. So let's go ahead and get started with a plumb cut. A plumb cut will be any part of the roof framing that is going to be vertical, like this section of the roof ridge and these common rafter cuts. And then the level cuts will be any part of the roof framing that will be running horizontal. And I didn't mention this one in the last roof framing video for building gable roofs, but another cut that we're gonna need will be a square cut. And a square cut will be any part of the roof framing that comes off of a component at a 90 degree angle or a square cut for the roof overhang. And if that makes sense, let's go ahead and set up our framing square for a 4 and 12 roof pitch ratio. And if you're going to be using a 3 and 12 roof pitch, then you would just simply lower the framing square keep the 12 in the same spot at the edge of the roof framing rafter and then reposition any part of the framing square on this side to match the roof pitch ratio you're going to need for your roof framing project. So again, in our example, we are going to be building a roof with a 4 and 12 roof pitch and all plumb cuts will be made from this part of the framing square, like this one here on the seat cut, and then all horizontal marks will be laid out from this part of the framing square, like this one here that is going to be sitting on top of the wall framing. And here's an example of how you can reposition the framing square by simply sliding it up or down the edge of the roof rafter until you get it into the position where you need it to be to make the mark for your seat cut. And we can do the same thing for the plumb cut or the vertical cut. We just simply reposition the framing square by sliding it either in the left direction or in the right direction along the bottom edge of the roof rafter. 
And again, the roof ratio for the seat cuts on the common roof rafter will be 4 and 12 for this roof. Next up, let's go ahead and head to the top of the roof rafter where we are going to flip the framing square over. We're just simply going to rotate it 180 degrees so that we can lay out and mark the top of the common roof rafter. And again, you can see where the ratio is 4 and 12 here. This is not going to be the same for the hip. And an example of how the ridge will need to be level. And in our example, we will have square cuts on each end of the ridge. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the jack rafters or the fill rafter cut at the top. And this is also going to be a 4 and 12 plumb cut. The same as our common rafter, except this is going to have a 45 degree angle on it. And if you notice, the bottom seat cuts are going to be the same for the common rafter as it will be for the fill or jack rafters. Let's go ahead and head back to the top where we can take a look at how the framing square is going to be positioned to lay out the plumb cuts for our jack rafters. And like I mentioned, you will have a 45 degree angle because the hip is going to be running at a 45 degree angle from the walls that will be supporting the jack rafters. And to make a 45 degree angle on a framing square, you can just simply line up any one of the same numbers on the framing square. So I could use the 5 and the 5, I could use the 7 and the 7, or I could use the 10 and the 10 to create a 45 degree angle. Or you could simply set your circular saw or other saws you're going to use to make these cuts at a 45 degree angle. Next up, let's go ahead and figure out the roof framing ratios for the hip rafter. That is not going to be a 4 and 12. For the hip, we need the number 17, or if you really want to get precise, it's going to be 16.97 to make the plumb cut or any level cut we need for the hip roofs. And again, if your roof ratio is a 6 and 12, then you're going to line your roof rafter. Then you're going to replace the 4 measurement by that measurement. If I have a 7 and 12 roof pitch, I'm going to line the number 7 up with the number 17 to lay out my hip roof rafter. And I'm going to do the same down here. And don't forget that you can rotate the framing squares if that's going to work better for you. Just make sure that the roof pitch ratios are correct on the framing square. Next up, let's take a look at the overhang ratio. And you can use the same ratio here if you're going to have plumb cut fascia board or fascia board that will be installed vertically. However, you won't be able to use it if the fascia board has a square cut on the end of it, like we're looking at in this example here. And I'm going to do another video on this in the future. I could not come up with anything that was simple and easy to explain because you can see here where it's a different ratio. And I actually thought I could flip the framing square over to lay out this part of the hip roof rafter, but I couldn't. And you can see here where this doesn't work. And the reason why this doesn't work is because the fascia board is going to be tilted. We could have used the 4 in 12 like we did for our roof rafters if this section of the fascia board wasn't angled. And even if we took the framing square and flipped it over to where we lined up our 17 and our 4, you can still see here where this is off a little bit. And I'm not about to suggest you can't do this, but I am going to suggest that it might not be perfectly perfect. So it might be easier for you to install the fascia board with a plumb cut on the roof rafter because you will be able to use all of the ratios I provided you with in this video. Or you could use a level to mark the lower end of the roof rafter. And this cut here would be at a 45 degree angle. And like I said earlier, the plumb cut will be the same at both ends of your jack rafters, your common rafters, and even the hip rafters. If you use the ratios I provided you with in the video. 
Just don't make the mistake of using the 4 and 17 ratio for the common or the fill rafters because the plumb cut down here is not going to be a 4 and 12. It's going to be a 4 and 17. These are going to be 4 and 12s and these are going to be 4 and 12s. If you're building a roof with a 4 and 12 roof pitch, again, you're going to have to change the ratio numbers on the framing square if you're building a roof with a different pitch ratio. And thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to visit our website. We have an organized list of our videos there. You might have a difficult time finding that anywhere else.